Welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is the flycatcher extraordinaire of my husband Joe. Hello. Hello. That's probably not your main goal in life. Was probably it? not my main goal, but I have just chased flies out of this office so that Vicky does not have to freak out halfway through this podcast. Oh, I just, I just hate them. I really can't bear them. I know, I know that we would be chin deep in corpses without them. But honestly, I could build. I could build a bridge over the corpses. And you do get used to smells. Flies. Not popular with Vicky. Hmm. Um. Hello. Hi. Uh, so yeah, we are. We're back. Obviously. Because <laughs> here we are. Um, you listening to us? A little bit sleep deprived. Oh. Yeah, but I have new hair. I have fairy fairy hair. Because I went to the hairdressers today. Hi, May. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, May. Um, I didn't go into a salon because May doesn't run a salon. She runs um, hair do's from her home. And she managed to make my terrible fringe look not quite so terrible. And she didn't even mock me that much. No? No. She did say, why didn't you let Joe do it? Why didn't you let Joe do it? I got overexcited and impatient. And I think I might have been hungry. Foolish. I know, but I love my hair. It's um, it's very kind of um, rainbowy colour. It looks a bit like a Monet painting, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've got Monet hair. Or oh, munch. Munch, like advert munch. <laughs> oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good radio. Good radio. I just did an impression of um, Edvard Munch's The Scream. It was a good one. Mm-hmm. So you should totally check out the podcast for that. Um, anyway, writing excuses. We're still on the writing excuses. Um, All very good series. reasons why people haven't written a book. Yes. And this week, uh, what are we drinking? I'm drinking water. Are you drinking? I have, I've got nothing. Do you want anything? My preparation is poor for this podcast. Basically, I've just come home from work. A hot day in a car factory. Sat down. Chased some flies out of the room. Sat down again. Oh, thanks. And now we're podcasting. Okay, so we're, I'm drinking water and Joe is not... Um, but this week's writing excuse is, I need motivation. What does that even mean? Well, um, we'll come to that in a moment because first we're going to do, um, what we're reading. Joe, what are you reading? Well, um, quite excitingly, I'm coming to the end of, um, what's his name? Is, um, Robert Jordan. Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. And I'm getting to the point where Robert Jordan died, possibly of old age, and um, somebody else took over. Oh, goodness. And wrote another three books to finish off the series. <sighs> right. It's probably time for you to have a break then. Well, I don't know. Well, I might lose all my momentum. All my really yes. slow grinding momentum. Also, I discovered online that somebody has counted all of the words in the Wheel of Time series. Right. And there are four and a half million Wow, that's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. Kind of puts into perspective how many words I've written on my 750 words per day, which I can probably find out right now. Joe, talk amongst yourself. Okay, so Vicky does this thing uh, on 750words.com. It's awesome. Where uh, you give them money and then write words. Yeah, it's great. But you should give me money and write words. And they, they keep track of they keep track of how many days you've done this for. And I am on a 106-day streak right now. Got to admit, I find it a little bit strange. Here you go. I have written since the beginning. Since well, this is only on seven hundred and fifty words. So bear in mind that this doesn't include my years of emails and articles and things like that. Mm-hmm. Four hundred and twenty-nine thousand four hundred and seventy-four words. And for why do you do this? I do this because many reasons. Firstly, because I find it a really good way to start my day. Like the first thing I do is I dump my brain out on 750 words and I use it as a journal so it's like journaling okay. I use it to just download my brain in 750 words but I also use it to record little things so like if you say something really funny it goes in my 750 words um, if we have little stories that I don't want to forget that I would otherwise forget they all go in there because um, you can also download all of the so it's entries. like a diary it's like a diary yeah um, yeah and it's just builds up a habit builds up a writing habit okay cool yeah so that's that's um, yeah that's how many words I've written. Um, I'm also I'm reading. So what am I reading? I'm reading Only Forward by Michael Marshall Smith. 
right? I read which, that a couple of months ago. Yeah, which I'm really enjoying, like really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. It's so good, and we talked a bit about it last week, so I won't talk about any more about it now. Um, also reading non-fiction, I'm reading Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. Okay. Uh, which is really interesting, and it's um, how it's about the bias that exists in data um, because of the way research is conducted. And it's incredibly interesting. So, for example, most uh, medical studies have historically been carried out on um, young white men. Right. Not very useful for, you know, the vast majority of the population, which isn't young white men. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's quite eye-opening and um, everybody should read it. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's really, really good. And I first heard about her when she was intru- interviewed on a podcast, I cannot for the life of me remember what podcast it was. I have a feeling it might have been free economics because it's the kind of thing that they would mm-hmm. they would talk about. Um, but yeah, she was in... I'd like stopped the car and ordered the book instantly cool. and I haven't got around to reading it until now. So that's cool. I'm also reading Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Saad, um, having finished How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Mm-hmm. And you've now got that to read, haven't you? Yes. Um, and I really... I love Leila Saad and she's... She's just awesome. She does really, really good work. And, and this is like totally not the most important thing about her at all, but her lipstick is always freaking awesome. <laughs> it's like perfect. And I have, I notice things like that because my lipstick isn't, is never awesome. <laughs> That's not the most important thing. I, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so what have we been up to? Well, we cleaned half the kitchen, which I'll come back to in a minute because that is important and relevant That's to this, quite significant, to this yeah. week's um, podcast mm-hmm. episode. Uh, but also, Joe made the most amazing dinner. I don't really know what happened. I, I, I mean, I felt like I cooked dinner. But it was awesome. Vicky felt like... Oh, it was the best dinner. Something magnificent happened. So we grow loads of vegetables. When I say we, I mean I. Um, and we cook delicious meals. And when I say we, I mean Joe. <laughs> um, and this this week, was it Saturday? Or Friday? Yeah. Thursday? Saturday. Well, Saturday. Friday's, pizza, Friday's pizza night, Friday's so it would have been Saturday. Yeah, so we had gnocchi, which was not homemade, um, with homegrown courgette ribbons, homegrown onions and spring onions and homegrown peas and sour cream sauce that was not homegrown. Uh, Yeah, and some some cheese that was not homegrown. And some cheese that was not homegrown. Oh my God, it was so good. (laughs) It was so good. It was like fresh and summery and vegetable-y and vitamin-y. And it was amazing. I'm very glad you enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. We need to make it again at the weekend. We can do that. Yes. And bread update. Thank you, <laughs> Natasha. Thank you, Natasha, for your top tips about cooking bread in bread tins because it worked. Yes, we've had a couple of really excellent loaves of bread. Yeah, thank you. And they've been like sandwich shaped. Yes. Much more convenient. Yeah. For putting into your face. So thank you, Natasha. Good um, and now, only eight minutes in, we shall get on <laughs> to this, <laughs> this week's writing topic. Um, come on, we're doing quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the writing excuses this week, obviously totally legitimate reasons people give me for not writing their book. And this week is motivation. Okay. Um, people often tell me they need motivation to write. And in fact, I had that very question just the other day from one of my super amazing Power Hour writers. Hi, Power Hour writers. Hello. Uh, They're awesome. And she asked the perfectly legitimate question. How do you stay motivated throughout the day, like even after the Power Hour is over? Because right. she emailed me to say, oh, I love the power hours. I get so much done. And then I noticed that one of the other members was like, oh, yeah, I stay motivated for most of the day after that. And, you know, I really struggle. Mm-hmm. And so can we have a group discussion about it? And can we talk about it? And we did have a group discussion about it. In fact, this very morning. Should we talk about what the power hour is? We can do that in a bit. Okay. We're teasing people with the teasing power Teasing people hour. with the effectiveness of the power hour. Yes. Um, so a couple of, couple of things. Um, we're we're going to share a few tips on how how to stay motivated and how to you know keep going and stuff but i wanted to bust a myth first and and then and then tell a fact so we're going to start with a a myth (laughs) i wanted to bust a myth about motivation in that it does not come from outside you Mm -hmm. people are like you do not get struck by lightning and hit by the muse and all that much like inspiration yeah you don't it doesn't come from some magical powers from outside you it and motivation is the same. You, you can't... I can't motivate you to do anything. I can't motivate you to do anything. That's not how Absolutely this works. Absolutely not. I can, I can, like, yell at you repeatedly and hope that... Well, I don't really yell at you. 
but I could I could kind of just like keep poking you and be like do that do that do that and I hope that eventually you get so fed up that you're going to do it but that's not motivation mm-hmm. um so yeah it comes from inside you and it only happens after you get started and we'll come back to that in just a second the other thing about motivation is and um we're gonna you're gonna learn about this in a couple of in a few podcast episodes because I interviewed an expert on productivity okay. um, and we talked about systems for writers and things like that um, and she was telling me how this is a little bit of a spoiler alert <laughs> for the upcoming podcast but she was telling me how if you have a couple of really really productive days then chances are the day after that is not going to be productive mm-hmm. um, just because that's we can't we can't keep up this ridiculous productiveness 24/7. This is just not how it's not how we're built. And so before we go any further with like how to be more productive and stuff like that, I just wanted to invite you if you struggle with procrastination and, you know, getting getting motivated and things like that. I wanted to invite you to pay attention to the difference between being genuinely knackered and just not being asked. And it's you can tell. Hmm. I can tell. Can you tell? Yes. Yeah, you can tell. And it's like I've, I've sat here today this afternoon because I. I didn't sleep very well last night and I sat here this afternoon and just like faffed and picked at stuff and I'm knackered and what I should have done is just go and read a book hmm. or done a stretching session or you know something that sat on the grass with your sheep sat on the grass with my sheep and I didn't I've sat here and picked at it and every single time I do that I'm like why am I doing this it's a waste of my time and it just makes me stressed so learn to recognize the difference between um being <laughs> being a lazy ass and genuinely being kind of kind of drained mm-hmm. and depleted because if you try and push yourself through when you're genuinely drained, it's, it's counterproductive. You have to be deliberately honest with yourself when that's, yeah. you know, when, you, when you're making that assessment there, don't you? Because it's quite yeah. easy to just go, well, I, I'm pretty tired, so I won't. Yeah. That's, that's not being honest with yourself. And I think the difference is when you try and start and you can't stick at it. Mm. Because, and we'll come to that, because we'll come back to um, a couple of stories, an illustrative story okay. about motivation and where it comes from. So last week we cleared out the inside outside room and i think we talked about that in last week's podcast I think we did and this week two things happened first thing was that i have been looking at my poor onion patch for about three weeks and i've been watching the bindweed creep higher and higher and thinking i really need to i really need to weed that and it just got worse and worse and it's a big area of kind of time consuming stuff that is not hugely fun no it's just like i've just got to pull the weeds out um, and so I just, I, was, I didn't, I didn't really want to do it and I put it off for three weeks and I think on Saturday morning or Sunday morning, I was just like walking past it. I was like, I'm just going to do this first row. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I started doing the first row and half an hour later, I'd done the whole bed. And it was just like, literally, this is going to take me five minutes. I'm just going to do the first row. And, and once you started, you, you carry on. Yeah. Illustrative story. The second, um, we were fa- just like faffing with our phones and books and things on the sofa on Sunday morning. And we're like, oh, what should we do today? We could do this. We could paint the office. And we went and faffed about doing a couple of things. And we were like, oh, we said we were going to clear out the kitchen. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just do one set of cupboards. Mm -hmm. That's like the the face level cupboards up on the wall. And I was like, let's just do one of those. And actually, before we even did that, it's like, you know what? Let's take all of the gin and booze out of the top cupboard, clear some space and put it in the Rayburn room where there's this like little alcove that makes a perfect, um, perfect like booze cupboard. And so we're like, we'll just do that. And we did that. And of course, once we started, it didn't take us more than a couple of hours to do the whole of that side of the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so we were like cleaning out the cupboards and emptying stuff and cleaning things and making decisions about things that really shouldn't be in the cupboard anymore and all kinds of good Throwing stuff. out things that went out of date in 2010. Really productive time. Yeah. That neither of us felt any inclination to do. Until we started. Until we started. Did five minutes on it and went, wow, you know, this isn't so bad. We could, we could just carry on. Yeah, but that's the magical powers of getting started and the magical powers of just five minutes. It's just like, that is that is my absolute biggest takeaway is just start. And that's where your motivation comes from. Because literally the most difficult thing you will ever do in any project or anything is starting it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, this goes back, because it's interesting. Because if you look at physics, at how physics works, and inertia and momentum. I was going to say physics, fairly big, fairly broad. <laughs> okay, let's just... Narrow it down to inertia and momentum. Right. It's like you think about how much energy it takes to get something moving. Right. It's enormous, right? An enormous amount of comparative energy to get something moving. Is it like a half mv squared or something? Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. <laughs> yes. So yeah, a lot of energy basically. To, if you've got like a rock, like a really heavy rock, and you're like 
levering it up and it's say it's like as big as me but it's on the top of a hill yeah and you could be levering it and it might take loads of people and it might take a shitload of energy to actually get it moving but once it's moving it keeps going hmm. it's really really easy to keep it going that's basic physics inertia and momentum physics in a nutshell <laughs> physics in a nutshell that's the whole universe explained <laughs> no seriously though yeah. inertia is incredibly powerful you need a lot of energy to overcome it momentum keeps things going really relatively easily. You don't need a lot of energy to keep things going. And that works the same for our brains as well. Surprisingly. I don't know if that's like a physics thing. Dear reader, your brain is like a rock. <laughs> Once you've rolled it over a couple of times... <sighs> this... But it's true. It's true. I need, to, I need to remember that. I need to remember what you just said. Okay. Talk okay. amongst yourself. So, um, moral of the story... It's not as bad. You don't have to commit to like hours of stuff. Just start. Just start. Just okay. start. And we have we have more tips for you as well. Don't worry. It's not just start, but that is the most powerful one. Just fucking get started. Um, second thing to say is that this isn't really about motivation. It's about procrastination and resistance. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and so just go and read Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art because it's a great book and it's all about resistance and where it comes from and why we have it and how to overcome it. Okay. So everybody, every writer needs to go and read Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. And also nobody wants to read your shit and everything else that Stephen Pressfield writes to say. Um, okay, a few more top tips about how to do the thing that you're struggling to do, how to get motivated, how to stay motivated, all that kind of thing. Assuming that you're not just knackered, right? right? If you're just knackered, go and do something else. Don't waste your time mm. and energy. Um, so first of all, Remember why you started, and I have a really nice coaster that has that on it, printed on it. Remember why you started. It's really good advice. If you can't remember why you started, or you don't care, stop doing it. Do something else. That doesn't just go for, you know, writing, writing. your book, but if you have a process in your business, or a time-consuming thing that you do, if it, if you can't see the value in it if you don't why remember you yeah well just stop yeah stop. Quest, question why you're doing it do something else. if it's something that has to be done that somebody else can do that you hate doing get someone else to do it yeah for sure offshore that shit yeah but yeah remember, remember why you started you had a good reason for starting um and when you are thinking about why you started think about your um life philosophy as well i've just finished reading grit by angela duckworth mm -hmm. it's a great book um, and she talks a lot in it about um, yeah your, your big why and it's not like the big goal on the top of the hill it's not the it's not that I want to write a book and then self publish it that's that's like a kind of pointy goal she's talking about the kind of thing that you can never really achieve so I want to be the best writer and storyteller that I can possibly be mm -hmm. that's not something I'm ever going to achieve right that's that's not a goal I'm ever going to reach it's something that I continually want to keep striving for. And I want, you know, I want what I do to help people tell the stories that need to be told mm -hmm. because that is the way the world learns and gets better, right? Right. Um, if one, and one of my goals within that might be I want to write and publish my next book. I want to get five new clients. I want to do this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. They're all things that I can achieve, but they're not going to keep me going long term. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, think about that. Um, this next tip is copyrighted to Laura Belgray. Um, hi, Laura, who hi, Laura. definitely doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> she um, might do. <laughs> she might do. She might do now we're mentioning it. Laura Belgray. Laura Belgray is a talking shrimp and she is an amazing copywriter and she's one of the people whose writing just makes me want to mm. explode. Laura Belgray is a talking shrimp. Is that what you just said? <laughs> no, she runs talking shrimp. She runs talking shrimp. Okay. <laughs> But she used to write for like comedy programs that you would have heard of like i think she wrote for i want to say seinfeld but that's probably not true i don't know but big big okay. comedy shows she's very funny um i did her story hero workshop a couple of weeks ago and it is brilliant um anyway one of the stories that she was telling the other day was when she went to the hairdressers and she was wearing obviously a mask and as i was wearing earlier and i discovered that this is the case as well when you're having your hair cut when you're wearing a mask guess what happens to the hair it's all in your mask. In your mask. Do you know what's more horrible than eating a bag of hair? Not many things. 
right? So um, a couple of like there's an old saying: if you want to get something done, eat the frog first. Mm-hmm. I'm vegetarian, and that analogy makes me want to cry. So um, I'm taking <laughs> Laura Belgrave's one of her sayings is: I'd rather eat a bag of hair. Okay. So eat the bag of hair first. If you have ten things to do and one of them is horrible, get that done. Yeah, if you have ten things to do and one of them is eat a bag of hair, <laughs> do that thing first. And then have a big drink of water. And the rest of your day will be better. I don't know, it probably wouldn't be actually eating a bag of hair. The rest of your day will be filled with... <coughs> hair balls. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, right. Eat the bag of hair first. And then give yourself a reward for doing the thing that you're resisting. Cake. Could be cake. Could be biscuits. It could be going for a walk. It could be alphabetizing your bookshelves. Which is what I did this morning after I did the thing that I didn't want to do. Not procrastinating at all. It was a reward. Um, so yeah, give yourself a reward. Great advice from John Holcroft. Hi, John. Hi, John. Um, and he says that when he can't write about something or when he's really struggling to write about something, he writes about why he can't write about it. So he will... It's right. very meta. So, and this is where the 750 words comes in really useful. And I do this sometimes as well. So I'll sit there and I'll go... I don't know what to write about. I'm supposed to be writing about this, but I can't. And this is why. And I think I'm struggling because this and this and this. And before you know it, you're writing about the thing mm-hmm. that you can't write about. It's like writing by stealth. It's really cool. Okay. So good that's, plan. Yeah, it's a super good plan. It's a good good piece of advice. Um, basically, don't allow not knowing what to write to stop you from writing because that's just your dickhead brain going, oh, you know what, let's just do something else. And it's, it's a real cop-out. Um, you can set yourself fake deadlines. Fake deadlines. They don't work very well for me because no. I see right through my fake deadlines. They just go whooshing past. They go whooshing past, yes. Um, so you could get someone else to set you actual deadlines. So every now and again, when you are clearly struggling with something, I'll be like, okay, well, I want chapter three in my emails at five o'clock tonight. And you'll be like, I don't want to. And then at 10 seconds to five o'clock, chapter three arrives in my emails. Yeah. So yeah, that does need to be some kind of a proper incentive. Um, and you know, maybe it's that Joe will bring me cake or maybe it's that he will make me a cake or maybe it's that he will mock me on Facebook or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Yes. Um, and finally you could sign up for my power hour live writing sessions, which people are actually absolutely loving. And you can do that at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. And, um, this is how it works. Shall I explain it? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so on Monday, Wednesday and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. UK time, we meet on Zoom and we each share our goals. So we type them into the chat box so that we can all see what each other's working on. So for example, I might be like, I want to write 1500 words of an article mm-hmm. on blah, blah, blah. And I'll say what it is. And other people might be like, I want to get my book outlined or I want to write three emails. Oh, and by the way, somebody's... I'm going to shout out to Carol because she's awesome. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Um, Carol's this morning was, I want to write um, my emails up until Wednesday. And she wrote the entire week's worth of her daily emails this morning. Yes. That's the kind of thing that you can achieve in my power hours. It's awesome. Um, So we do that. We set our goals and we go, yay, do it. And then I set a timer, which dingles after 60 minutes. I set a timer. I turn myself um, on mute and mute everybody else and we turn off our distractions and then I also turn off my video because I think I gurn when I write <laughs> and nobody needs to say it to see that you can keep your video on if you like it's entirely up to you um, and then we write write furiously mm-hmm. and then the dinger goes off and then we type in what we achieved in the chat box so it's like did we achieve our goals and some people might have not quite made it but like made really good progress and other people smashed through them and other people did like extra things or did something else instead or you know but they everybody gets something everybody done gets it done and then we go yay and we kind of do you know high fives and rah and sometimes somebody will be like oh i'm writing i'm writing a thing about xyz and i'll be like that sounds really interesting tell me about that and so we'll have like a little chat about what that is mm-hmm. um and then oh and at the beginning as well i'll usually share just a silly writing prompt just in case somebody is really stuck so it might be like oh what's your favorite smell or What's your favourite film and what does it say about you? Okay. And you don't have to write about it, but if you're sitting there doing that, oh, I don't know what to write about thing, it just gives you something to get started with. And then either at the end of it, we'll spend 10 minutes and we will either 
I will answer a question that somebody has asked like this morning mm -hmm. or I will share a pre-prepared writing tip if I haven't got any questions to answer. And sometimes we'll have a group discussion if I think that other people have more, more useful things to say than me. Like this morning when it was like, how do you stay motivated? I was like, well, the rest of the group's going to have all sorts of interesting suggestions. Sure. So we had a little chat. Um, and then you feel properly smug at the amount of work you've got done before 8 o'clock in the morning. And then you have an amazing day. Sounds cool. Yeah. By the way, the smugness is a legit benefit. It's a legit benefit. Thrown in for free. Thrown in for free. And you also get access to the recording which is available until the next live session. Okay, so and if you can't make it at that point, you can yeah. do it later. And you know, quite a few of the people who are members of my Power Hour do the recording later on, and then they'll email me and they'll be like, oh, I got all this done. So if you're listening and you do the recordings, email me and let me know how you get on, because I love hearing what you've done. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, it's ace, and I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm extremely grateful to John who gave me the idea. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's a cool thing. It is a cool thing. And it's only £25 plus VAT per month. Per month. It's £2.08 per session. And what you get is accountability, you get a schedule, you get some advice, you get... A bit of companionship, yeah. everybody has a bit of a chat. You get the warm, smug glow. Yeah, and I'm going to be adding extra um, sessions as well in the next few weeks at no extra cost. You know, the price you pay when, when you join is the price you pay. And yeah, it'll just be even better value. Cool. Got literally nothing to lose and a whole lot of, um, yeah, a whole lot of awesomeness to gain. So come and join us, moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. Nice. That's my biggest tip for today. So Joe, what's the takeaway? Um, aside from joining the power hour, yeah. um, get started, get started. Even if you don't want to do the three hours work that is in front of you, start. Yes. You'll probably find it won't be as painful as you think. Yes. Once you move in, do five minutes. Yeah. And we've got a review. Nice. From Harriet Goodall. Hi, Harriet. Hi, Harriet. Um, do you want to read it, Joe? Yes. Um, I used to think podcasts were for boring people, but I was I so to wrong. Read the, the oh, sorry. First. Sorry. Headline was fun, informative, and simply awesome. Five stars. Um, I used to think podcasts were for boring people, but I was so wrong. I love listening to Vicky and Joe. They sound like they're having a ball. They make me want to pick up the gin and join them. I'm a business owner, so the topics that Vicky talks about are right up my street. I learn lots, and she gives fantastic advice, ideas. Keep it up. Thumbs up. Cool. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Yeah, that's a really nice review. That is nice. Oh, if you'd like to be featured on um, the 1000 Authors show, you too could be featured. You just have to say nice things about us. Actually, yeah. if you said shitty things about us, we'd probably read that out probably too. Probably read that as well, Please yeah. don't. Please yeah. don't. Be nice. It's like, <laughs> one star, rambling nonsense. Which would be accurate, to be fair. So. We'd probably um, read that. Yeah. So next week, we're going to be back with more writing excuses and we're going to be talking about the epic writing excuse of I'm not a writer. Nice. Yes. Um, in the meantime, though, you can join my live writing sessions at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. Um, you can, if you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you something silly. Nice. And nice. It's not like damaging or anything. It's, like a, it's a nice thing. <laughs> um, it's, it's not writing. <laughs> Or anthrax. Okay. Um, if Honest. you like this podcast, go and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. We are available on Stitcher and Spotify and Overcast and all sorts of places. And mm -hmm. uh, we're all over the bloody place. And we're also on YouTube. Sweet. And if you know somebody who will enjoy this nonsense, send them a link. moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast. Thanks very much, Joe. No worries at all. Thanks for listening, listeners. And we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.